I'm so excited to be sitting here talking with you in the room with you, your co-founder of Avenue Capital Group. So I want to ask you, what is your advice to young women, especially in terms of investment? What do you think they should be doing? What do you wish someone told you? I think that, that the best advice that I can give and what I do say to young women, because for me, that's my, my favorite type of audience when I'll go to a university or, or have people in the office and, and they're young, just starting out, and they want to know, well, why aren't there more senior women? How am I going to become a senior woman? And, and I think that, that really the best advice I can give is to really take a chance when you're young and make sure you do something that you love. I mean, obviously work hard, right? The, that's the advice that everybody gives you. But also never give up because I think that women in particular and other, other minorities as well face a lot of challenges and, and biases right whether they're overt or subconscious i mean either way it's difficult but i would say to persevere and try to find a mentor because i think that really helps if you have someone to talk to and and the other piece is a lot of women drop out of the workforce at different points in their life and and i would say stay in the workforce even on a part-time basis because it's very hard when you leave completely to come back. And I've seen that happen with a lot of women. And, and really, as long as, even if you're in just on a part-time basis, you can always come back full-time. And, and it's, it's one of those things that unfortunately, it happens to women. You don't see men dropping out of the workforce the way that women do. But, for us, in, in terms of, of women that started 40, 40 years ago, I think it's easier now, and we have made some strides, but there's still, there's still a long way to go. And I like to be positive about it. I mean, I think that, that this topic gets talked to death to some degree, and as opposed to focusing on the positive, a lot of people tend to focus on the negative, so it can, be done, but you don't have to be superwoman. You don't have to be doing everything. Just do the best you can. I like that piece of keeping your feet wet because it's easier once you're at least a little bit in there in the part-time angle, you can still go back to full-time. But can you give us a little insight into your career? Give us an example of a time you kept persevering, you never gave up. One of those stories that sticks with you when you're looking back, reflecting on your career, it's at the top of your mind. Yeah. So, well, when I started, it was my brother and I formed our own firm. So, so I like to say I didn't have to climb up the corporate ladder because I was at the top of the corporate ladder, but there was three of us. So it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't that deep a team. But I think in the very beginning, it was very exciting, but also very hard. Right, we were trying to build a business, and we would kind of look at each other at the end of every year and, and say, you know, in the very beginning, are we going to be able to do this next year and, and keep the lights on? Because what gave you the guts to keep going, even when you had those questions? I think that, I mean, we were young. I was 26, and, and he was 29. But I think the fact that it, it wasn't like we had a goal of we need to be this big. It was really about working hard and trying to build something. And at the time, we thought we would build something maybe with 10 people, right? There was never this goal of we need to be X billion. Right? I mean, in, in the very beginning, it's a matter of doing well enough that you can support the business, support your employees. And I think we, that's a big piece of it, having an obligation. To, to the people that work for you. And I think the one, when you say what sticks in your mind, I'll never forget when, you know, and back then you're working 24 seven, there was no such thing as a Blackberry or, you know, working from home. It just didn't exist. You had to physically be in the office. And, 
And it was on the weekend, and I went downtown to pick up the sign that we had ordered. It was like we had our own office space, and and I went to the office, and I got on a ladder, and I hammered the sign into. And I, you know, it sounds silly, but that was such a sense of accomplishment in terms of we have a real office, like we actually have space, and. And really have pride in, in what you're doing and pride in what you're building. Doesn't sound silly at all. Actually, I got chills <laughs> because that's something tangible. You can say, look, I accomplished this. Here's my sign. And then look how it's grown throughout the years. Sonia Gardner, I appreciate you coming on. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.